Good morning. It's Friday, April 12th. Thanks for joining us on Up to the Minute. I'm Dr. Natalie Garza, HCC History Professor, and I'm going to tell you uh, how to find us. We're live on the Houston Community College District Facebook page. That's Houston Community College and not YouTube. Oh, sorry, Houston Community College, not HCC. Um, and we're um, on YouTube. We're also on X, LinkedIn, and on HCC TV at noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. Today, we're welcoming the return of HCC Rec Sports to talk about the latest with them, including a big soccer win, Tiffany. Um, Tiffany Lane, Program Director of HCC Recreation Sports. Um, and we are, um, we'll be with you in a little bit, Tiffany. Um, and we are also um, interviewing Tim Stroud for Film Friday. So welcome both of you. So Tiffany, I wanna go ahead and start with you. Um, you are Program Director of HCC Recreation Sports. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, glad to be here. We'll start by saying congratulations. You're coming off a recent win and uh, looking at my notes, you've been working with a lot of champions. So we're mm -hmm. gonna focus on club sports starting with fall 2023. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those champions? Yeah, so um, beginning fall 23, 2023, we had a number of uh, students or club programs participating from men from men's soccer, men and women's basketball, tennis, as well as flag football. And so uh, we had a great season all the way around. Our women's team had the opportunity to compete for the championship last uh, semester in the fall. Uh, they had an opportunity to uh, kind of seek revenge from the spring season where they uh, were beaten by Texas Southern University's club team. And so we got an opportunity to meet them in the championship last semester. And lo and behold, uh, they came out victorious, uh, brought home the trophy. And so it is great. I'm going to see if you guys can see this. This is that I don't know if you can see it, but that's the trophy right there, guys. And so uh, that's the one that they brought home last semester. We also had two students selected to the all tournament team. Uh, and so there was Maya Wright and then Brianna Kidd. And Brianna Kidd was voted by the coaches and her peers as the most outstanding uh, athlete of the tournament. And so that's what started this, this championship winning season for us. And so it was great and a great opportunity for them. And then <laughs> so, um, I, I mean, women's basketball has has gained so much popularity uh, yes. over the past year. I know there was a lot of excitement over the NCAA tournament. How how is the women's basketball team feeling about all of that? Yeah, they're excited. Um we wanted to bring uh, women's basketball to the forefront here. So they've done an awesome job, even this semester going uh, undefeated. And so uh, we lost in the semifinals, unfortunately, but they had, they've had they had a great season. And women, like you said, women's basketball is big and popular right now. And I personally am excited about that as a basketball fan uh, and a former athlete at that. So uh, it's big, it's huge. Women's sports is popular and we, I'm excited. We're excited about it. Uh, is there a particular league that they're, that they're in or is it just called club sports or can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, it's, all of our teams compete in different leagues, but uh, years ago in the, Houston, in the city of Houston, the Houston area, the uh, sports directors, the recreational sports directors got together and they decided, hey, we want to minimize travel. So they decided to create some leagues. So Lone Star hosts uh, leagues for volleyball, soccer, and then CSU hosts the league. It's called the Houston uh, Club Basketball Association, uh, Club Sports Basketball Association. So Texas Southern kind of runs that. Uh, and then Lone Star uh, hosts other leagues. And so the teams get to compete against uh, other colleges in, in the Houston area, sometimes even Texas A&M, Sam Houston State University. Lamar has competed uh, as well as uh, Stephen F. Austin State University. So it's an opportunity for our students to compete against other teams. And sometimes they even get an opportunity to play some JUCO, some JUCO games against their athletic programs like our men's team did to this semester going 
going out to uh, Lamar State uh, College in Port Arthur. Our women's team actually had Mountain View College come down and compete against them last semester. So yeah, it's an opportunity for them to compete, have a good time against other club teams. So uh, we sent out an e e uh, email goes out to all the colleges in the in the region or the area. Say hey, we're having this league. Who all wants to sign up? And whoever signs up, that's who we compete against. That's great. I'm glad that our student um, athletes are getting an opportunity to to do that and to you know expand on their experience. Yes. So uh, moving on to this semester, spring 2024, let's talk about our HCC Eagles and the soccer championships. Yeah. So before I get to the soccer championships, I want to make sure uh, to note that this semester uh, we were able to bring women's volleyball back and for them to compete. We were able to field a team for our women's soccer team uh, since coming back from COVID. Uh, so we're slowly reengaging those students in various sports. And so I was excited about bringing those two sports back. Uh, baseball is just practicing right now, hoping to be competitive competitive in the fall semester. And so this semester we had uh, baseball, uh, women and men's basketball, women and men's soccer, and uh, women's volleyball in our tennis program. So they're all competing right now. Well, tennis and volleyball are the only ones still remaining. Uh, tennis volleyball has the opportunity to compete for the championship on tomorrow, Saturday at Long Star College North Harris. And so they have a very strong uh, opportunity or chance to compete for the championship. We're going into the tournament as our uh, as the second seed. Uh, and then our tennis program will be competing for the championship the following Saturday, uh, April 20th. And so we're super excited about these opportunities. But last weekend, uh, our men and women's soccer programs had the opportunity to compete for the championship. They both uh, played against the Lone Star College Side Fair campus teams. And so our women, uh, again, this is their first semester competing since uh, returning from COVID. And they were able to finish second. They lost um, zero. One And so they still brought home a second place trophy. We're super excited for them uh, having only 12, I think, 12 people in attendance. And so they fought hard. Um, but the big uh, the big game, the men's bas men's championship, the men's soccer championship where they competed against Lone Star, we went into full time, which is 90 minutes tied one one. And then so we went into extra time, which is another 30 minutes uh, still tied. And then you go to penalty kicks. After the first round of penalty kicks, we're still tied. And oh my so, God, that's, that's yeah, it's so much drama, so much drama. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I got to see our kids um, at a high and a low, and they had the opportunity to persevere. And we ended up winning uh, via penalty kicks, 8-6, and they were super excited. Um, they told me at the beginning of the semester, Miss Tiffany, Coach Tiffany, we're going to win the championship for you this semester. And that's immediately what they said. We told you we we're going to win. They were super excited. I'm happy for them. Uh, they fought hard. They went through some adversity where last semester we didn't have a coach. I'm stepping in. Not very not very good with soccer. Still learning the sport. But uh, they they did a wonderful job. I'm so super proud of them. Yeah, congratulations to both the men and women uh, soccer teams. That's really Thank exciting. You. Thank you. Yeah, my son plays soccer, so we've been we've been uh, going to games and things like that. And I've been in in the Dynamo Stadium when it goes down to penalty kicks, and then I have to watch through my fingers. I get so nervous. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is. It was. It was very nerve wracking for me. I'm standing on the side, so I can only imagine for the for them those who are uh, taking those shots, and then the the students there watching their teammates. Um, so yeah, it was exciting. So um, you said, you know, we're still, um, we have some teams ongoing. The women's playoffs are, are going to be a lone star tomorrow. Where are the tennis playoffs going to happen? The uh, tennis playoffs will be all at Lone Star Montgomery campus. The volleyball tournaments will be at um, Lone Star um North Harris. And okay. so we'll have that, those, uh, that information up on our Instagram page, uh, which is HEC uh, underscore club of sports. And then also, um, so that's the easiest place to find the information as far as those games and how they're doing well. Okay. And lastly, can you explain what the retention initiative is for rec sports? 
Yeah, so um, as we all know that we're here for, uh, retention is a big word right now. And so uh, what we, since we have our students and they're in part of a team and uh, they come to practice t- twice a week and they have games at least once a week. And so we've partnered with the advising department to uh, speak with our students to go over their advising report and their academic advising report. So they know uh, to ensure that they are in the correct academic program. Uh, They understand how to read that report. So they know which classes, which uh, classes they satisfied or which areas they satisfied and which classes they have uh, remaining to take. So they can either uh, transfer or uh, complete their certification or degree plan. And so that's been a great opportunity. We started uh, uh, re-engage those efforts this semester. Uh, um, Prior to COVID, we had a few sessions. And so then now we're re-engaging those students. So we had some students meet with uh, Dr. King or Mr. King, Derek King over at Stafford. Our tenant soccer teams did uh, last Friday. And so they went over their report, they asked questions, they were engaged. And so the idea there is to make sure our students are taking the right classes, they understand how to read their report, and they understand their their resources as far as where to find the advisor, when they need to speak with their advisor, um, and also talked about basic needs and then our career services uh, program, our opportunities. Yeah, that's really important. As you said, you know, I'm an instructor, so we want to make sure that all of our students are doing well. And so I think we're we're all depending on the advisors to do a lot, but and it's good when they're able to uh, coordinate with different programs. Right. Yes. Okay, so thank you, Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany Lane, Program Director of HCC. Uh, recreation sports. We'll have your info in the post after the show. Um, before I let you go, though, I want to know, uh, let students know um, how to get involved in sports if they're interested. Right. Great question, Natalie. So um, they can email me at sports at hccs.edu. That's S-P-O-R-T-S at hccs.edu. Again, they can follow us on social media. That's uh, Facebook, Instagram, at HCC Sports, uh, HCC Club Sports. We also have a Rick Sports page. And uh, and then we also, what another initiative I've started this semester uh, is also streaming some of our games. So they stream to Facebook and uh in youtube when we have the opportunity and so we have some volleyball matches up we have some basketball games up so if you miss some of those you want to go back and uh ch- check out our teams that is an opportunity again at hcs club sports on uh on uh, facebook and on youtube is hcc uh, rec sports so you look for that nice little eagle and you know you're in the right place. Uh, and then we also can be found, of course, on the on the HEC website, just searching uh, club sports or recreational sports. Thank you so much, Tiffany Lane. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And joining me as co-host is Dr. Nicholas Cox, chair of the HCC History Department. He's my chair. I'm so happy to be uh, co-hosting with you today, Nick. Hey, good morning. It's great to see you. I didn't expect to see you today, but it's always nice. Yes. So we are bringing in um, Tim Stroud. You will be talking to Tim Stroud for Film Friday. All right. Well, let me uh, let me introduce Tim to the program. Uh, Tim, you are the CEO of Stay Tuned for Vets and the host of our HCC TV's Veterans Voice program. Is that right? That is correct. And good morning. Happy Friday. I'm glad to be here. And congratulations to uh, Coach Tiffany, I was horrible at sports in both high school and college. <clears throat> Excuse me, but now I know where they make the trophy, so I'm great at everything. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So, so Tim, I understand you're a vet, and the show you do for HCC TV is about veterans and veteran students, staff, faculty, um, as is your organization, which we're going to look forward to talking to you a little bit about. Um, but first, can you tell us about this upcoming Netflix series, Mo? Ooh, yeah. So if you're not familiar with uh, with Netflix, of course, multi-billion dollar corporation, and they've done what so, so many other of the channels have done is they pulled the eyeballs from the traditional um, uh, TV stations 
and they're, they're creating their own shows and they're looking for unique opportunities to spotlight everything that is wonderful uh, in the United States. The great thing about living in Houston, we're so diverse and, and our cultures come together and just meld, which is beautiful, but we need to learn more about the stories. And one of the guys, Mohammed Nahir Mo, uh, is from Palestine. He immigrated to the United States. His family went through horrific challenges and he is a true success story. He's a stand-up comedian and now they film that show in Houston and they're currently filming for season two. No, that's great. I appreciate that. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I I binge a lot of TV on maybe Christmas break, spring break, summer break. But throughout the school year, I just kind of let it sit and forget about it until I have that time off. And maybe I'll come and uh, uh, catch up on Mo when I can. Uh, but I hadn't heard about that show filmed here in Houston. That's great. Um, yeah, you, I'm very similar to you. I, I don't watch a lot of television, but when I do, if I'm flying over to Europe to, to visit with my, my kiddos or I'm on a trip somewhere, I'll listen to a, uh, an awesome podcast like the ones on HCC. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, the TV shows are a little bit more difficult. You either have to watch them or absorb them at, at a quick pace. The great thing about that show is that <clears throat> it's very well written. The acting is great and the editing is right on point. And even better is that it uses real people. And so it's not like one of the real housewives stories or one of those shows. This one talks about somebody's real journey, a little bit of Hollywood sprinkled in there. But they're using real people in the community to film these. And that's where we come in with the, the veterans and they're filming in uh, Houston, Austin, and Dallas, and maybe a little bit in San Antonio to tell his story of how he immigrated to the United States. And it's just so wonderful to see people that you know in a community appear on the big screen. Now, I understand uh, you. What else have you been binging? You, you, well, you, I just wanted to ask you again. I, uh, you, you mentioned earlier, I think you performed as one of the characters on the show. Is that right? Tell us about your experience as an actor on yes, the show. Yes, and I apologize, Nick. I, <clears throat> Yes, I don't have a speaking role. I'm what's known as an extra. And uh, my uh, my high school uh, guidance counselor always says I, I was a little extra. <laughs> but now I get paid to be an extra, which is great. And that simply means you don't have a speaking role. You're still in the scene. And so just imagine you're watching, you know, the Age of Ultron or one of the Marvel studio uh, movies. And you see all the people running and screaming or talking in the background, but you can't hear them. That's me and several others. We get to have a lot of fun. And on this one, I got a lot of FaceTime. I played a, a DPS officer or a Border Patrol agent. And when, uh, without giving any spoilers, because we have to sign those NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. If you watch season one, you know that Mo uh, wound up in Mexico and he didn't have a passport. And so, ta-da! That's where I come into the picture with my team and we, filmed an amazing scene with just not adults, but families and all kinds of people to help tell their story all in a humorous fashion because it's one of those stories is that you 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 want to hear about the struggle, but you also want to hear the strength. And if you, it doesn't matter if you're in the military, a first responder, you like joking about stuff because that's a, a defense mechanism. Same with him. And so you riddle that into the, uh, the show. Nicholas, it's actually very captivating. And it's one of the shows that even if I wasn't in it, I'd watch the show. You would binge it out. You'd binge it out. So I understand that there's, you know, this is a stand-up comedian show, and it is also an an action show about um, Homeland Defense and Border Patrol. Uh, is it an action comedy? And how do you guys stay safe with all of this action filmed during the episodes? How do you guys <clears throat> keep safety on set? I'm going to start with that last one first, uh, Nicholas, because that's uh, a lot to unpack for anybody going to the set for the first time. Since I play an agent and I actually played it an, a, uh, uh, an extra in the, the CW show Walker, which was filmed in Austin, and then Friday Night Lights, I played a sheriff. I think I'm being typecast here uh, <laughs> as a bald guy. I don't think I looked that rough and tough, but they were like, you're a sheriff. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Um, and so, but on all three shows, um, safety, safety, what's the other thing? Fun, but safety are the first two. Um, but for that, we get on set and we get our uniforms and then we dress up and then we go to the props department. <clears throat> so we get our Batman utility belts 
And uh, we clip those on just like the, uh, the officers do across the United States. But instead of real weapons and rounds, we get all rubber stuff, which is great. And the, the props manager will come out and says, uh, displaying a rubber gun, issuing a rubber gun. And then he'll give it to a production assistant or one of his assistants. He or she say the same thing, which is excellent. They'll reiterate the, uh, the same words. So you hear that. And then when they hand it over to you, they make sure that you know this is a rubber gun. Once it's, once it's in your holster and it's secure, do not remove it unless you are directed to do so which is amazing because we all know the tragedies that happen on sets and the ones that happened uh, recently in, in Hollywood. There was no reason for that uh, because um, safety is just one of the steps that should be in there. And we absolutely complied with uh, our direction that we have on set. And then we had fun. Uh, we got to take some pictures, which um, some of them we can post, but anything that reveals what's going to happen on the movie is verboten. We cannot um, uh, display those, but it was just such a great feeling knowing that um, so many people went to the set as a first timer because we're drawn to the, the, the limelight, whether it's in sports or in acting or theater, and people got to experience a little piece of that uh, and wow. do it in an environment where they knew uh, that, that uh, it would enrich their lives. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me, let me give you just one more minute here because we want to ask you before you go about the HGC TV show that you do, the Stay Tuned for Vets, but uh, just tell our audience what they most need to know if you had one minute here. Well, with uh, the Veterans Voice, uh, what we do is we spotlight the, the veteran service organizations in the greater Houston area. Some are national, some are state, and some are local veteran service organizations. The majority of them are nonprofits. Every now and then we'll sprinkle in a few of the for profits that are doing amazing work in the greater Houston area. But it doesn't matter if you're active duty, you are a veteran, family member, or a care provider. I want to make sure that you know the benefits that are available to you because too often times they um, veterans come back they, or a military comes back, they transition out and they're not properly briefed or the people that are helping them don't know. That's a great thing about HCC. We catalog all of those uh, and we mix it in with students because HCC has tons of non-traditional military students and their family members that would uh, qualify for these benefits. Well, I appreciate that. You know, over in the history department, we've got a couple of vet vets on the faculty and and I know one of them, particularly Jim Rostanzal, has done a lot of work with the veterans programs on campus. But, uh, uh, but Tim, I just want to thank you. It's fascinating to hear about this Houston area TV production and your experiences there. Um, we've got a wrap, but we'll have more information about Stay Tuned for Vets and everything you do with vets on, on the show notes in our show. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Have a great weekend. You too. So I've seen Mo. Um, it's it's really funny. I and and I guess, you know, being in being in Houston and we don't normally have uh shows or movies filmed here, it was exciting to see pieces of Houston in there and um, be like, oh, I know where that's at. So, yeah, I mean, I grew up here. And so I remember when I was a kid in the 80s or a teenager in the 90s, when there were film productions of things like Texasville and The Gambler and Reality Bites and, and uh, seeing some of, of my high school friends be extras on those. Or you might have just seen uh, spreading on social media this week that the, the duplex house in the Montrose where Reality Bites was filmed is being demolished and replaced with some, you know, probably god awful soulless condos or whatever. But you know, a, a yeah, RoboCop too. A lot of my friends, a lot of my friends when I was in high school were in were in the second RoboCop film. Uh, but yeah, it, it's great that we have a little little film production here in Houston. Yeah, and uh, I'll, so I'll be watching uh, for Tim on the on the upcoming season. Uh, so now we're uh, got news events and announcements. Um, the first, don't strain your brain. Test taking strategies. Tests are where the rubber meets the road and can often make or break a class experience. Fortunately, there are things we can do to improve our performance in the test uh, situation. The Recipe for Success workshop discusses pre-test, in-test, and post-test strategies that can reduce anxiety, increase preparedness, and develop confidence in students' test-taking ability. So students, uh, tune in noon, Tuesday, April 16th, and we'll have more information in the post uh, after the show. 
Well, we also have a student music recital this spring. Uh, music majors will perform the repertoire that they have studied and prepared to showcase their development and skills in our music program. That is at the HCC Northwest Performing Arts Center Theater One, Wednesday, April 17th at 7.30 p.m. It's free, no registration is necessary, and everyone is welcome. Check our post after the show for more information. Also health-related, know your status, free HIV and STD testing. It's the responsible thing to do, and this is a free way to check your status whether you want to confidentially find out about HIV or STDs, HCC is here to help you find your status. This is happening at the HCC Central Harmon Building from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Wednesday, April 17th. Check more uh, uh, info on our post after the show. Well, for staff and faculty, uh, HCC's Talent Engagement Office is hosting its fourth roadshow. They have valuable information and network sessions. Uh, each week is, uh, next week, sorry, is a 457 Tech Saver and a ABCs of Compensation with attendees receiving treats and giveaways. Uh, this next one will be on April 18th, Thursday, at the Northline campus from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, to register, check our post after the show for more information. Uh, HCC has talented faculty. We've got a... a art exhibit, Avoid Highways. It's a faculty art exhibition and it features the work of John Force. I'm, do you know his name? I don't, I feel like I'm pro pronouncing it wrong. Force or Force Say. Uh, the exhibition is through May 1st at the HCC West Loop Gallery. It's free, no registration necessary and check our post after the show for information. All right, also just a reminder out there to everybody that summer enrollment is open and fall registration opens on monday check our post for more information after the show coming up um, for mental health monday the bridge over troubled waters returns to discuss sexual assault, assault awareness month and we'll welcome one of the executive co-chairs of the chancellor's new we care campaign that debuted during the student success summit so thank you for joining us we'll see you next time thank you nick have a great weekend, Natalie.